welcome you this morning in the wonderful precious name of Jesus nice to see you all nice to see my brother i think for some senior right your madam has prayed you in the faithfulness of god you're in the right place my word to you is don't worry nobody life short don't worry with nobody not even church too because you might be coming here and you might find some little you know little back and all thing too now nah, with everything in the church do let this courage you and when those voices come to speak to you and want to tell you this and that tell them now nah, i want to hear this i want to love jesus and follow jesus that's just an encouragement to you it's a good place here's a good place to come and to worship god and to have fellowship with each other you have a wonderful you have wonderful pastors and leaders who you could speak to you and encourage you because we all need that um 33 or 34 years still in ministry and i have not reached a place where i'm not stop learning amen One of our foot soldiers is here, Sister Golin. Sister Golin, come and bring greetings in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for her. Praise the Lord. I bring you greetings in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our soon-coming King. I said I bring you greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on somebody, you must get excited when you hear Jesus. That name that is above every other name. At that name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. If we don't want to do it now, we will do it then. That he is Lord. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings once again in Jesus precious and wonderful name. I thank God for being here this morning. You know it's always a pleasure when I hear we coming down here. I get excited. I get up early and on the move. And I thank God one more time. God bless each one of you. Amen. Is it right if you laugh and smile in church? Is it all right? Well, I don't know, you know. I don't know if things change. Give somebody a little bongs, huh? Come on, give somebody a little bongs. Nobody I give brother Bini a bongs in front where I'm brother Bini. Oh, I don't know. Nice. Yeah, give him a little bongs, man. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Church will be so good if we will just put aside self and flesh. if we would just put aside the thoughts that sometimes we think church will be not boring it will be excited you when wait for 9:30 you will be here 9 o'clock we got a little traffic coming on but you see when you serving man you find yourself in all set of conflict and you use it to now the church not good the pastor not good this one I love me this one I treated me good that's when you're serving flesh that when you're still carnal where thing the word carnal come from and long time they had a word they use instead of drain what did they use that the carnal If you ever been to Guyana like I have been they do not call it drain they call it canal and you know what is in those canal in Guyana stagnant water moss smelly rubbish in the spiritual term when you canal you're carrying all that all that stench all that moss all that garbage 
and you find yourself depressed, oppressed, and then you walk over the church and you forget God. Let me ask you something. Leaving the house of God to be encouraged and run into a rum shop, does that help you? Leaving the house of God and going to the gambling house, does that help you? Leaving the house of God and worshiping God and going to some contrary party or bacchanal, does that help you? It could never help you. <coughs> this morning, God has confirmed his word. I think in my time, eh? I want you to listen. Because sometimes in the drama, and amen, amen, we, we doesn't hear what when you're done, we preach. I hear you preach, amen. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord is quick, powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword. My dear sister Golin is our friend, Donkey Ears. You ever heard that term, Donkey Ears? You know where they come from, I don't know. But Donkey Ears. She went through hell. Let me put it first. Heaven, hell, and doom. But she's still standing. Put your hands for her. She could have been out there. She had opportunities. And what have you. When we were in a former church. With about 200 people in that congregation. We used to be together. She was the prayer. She and her husband was the prayer leaders on a Wednesday morning. You know what she used to do? They used to walk the village and bring 30, 40 people every Wednesday. Prayer, meeting, and praying for them. And God has used her in many ways, in worshiping and leading and preaching. And she's still here. Obstacles have come. And it doesn't matter. Obstacles will come in your Christian life. While you are going through this life, my brother and sister, while you take up the cross, you will face with many trials and tribulations. I don't know what people look on Facebook and YouTube and listen to some of these crazy, I call them crazy, sick preachers. And telling them, all they tell them is bring your money, Bring your car and bring your house. And you have to be careful what you're looking on YouTube and Facebook. Eh? You have to be careful who prophesying to you eh? and who's speaking word to you. Eh? You know, I've been in ministry so long. And I went to so, many, so much of seminars and seminary. I used to call them cemetery because it's dead. And so much of stuff. I've been among the biggest set of preachers and leaders. And many of them were contrary. And when they started to prophesy, you know, I was sitting up there and they would skip me. They would skip me totally and prophesy the, the junk about people and bring them money and different things. I said, but why do, I, why do you prophesy with me? Why am I going to beat him? The, devil, the monkey knows which tree to climb. When people are going to speak things to you, which will in the last days. Eh? Jesus said, in the last days, you will have many false prophets and many false teachers. And he didn't just talk in about the world, talking behind here, inside here, in the assembly. Now listen to me carefully. The church is a perfect church. I know you understand that one. I will explain it to you. What you see in as a church is this. The four walls. Word and spirit. What? Assembly. Grace, fellowship, family, church, Pentecostal, open Bible. That's what you see in as a church. That's not the church. The church is 
the living organism, that's you and I that have a heart pumping blood, we are the church. You may say, well, I'm not perfect. Look, I make a mistake. All of us from here to down there, all of us, we will make a mistake till Jesus comes. Will we go to hell for it? No. I have to explain this thing, you know. Because when people make mistake and they come short, they don't realize. Now, I'm not saying willfully, yeah? At times. They don't realize they have a, somebody better than Alan Ram Logan. You know, Jesus is our advocate. Jesus is our advocate. Advocate, for, another word for advocate is lawyer. And he said, when you sin, come to him and he will forgive you. None of us sitting here or none of us preaching on the big channel or whatever. If you hear some of these preacher testimony from Joel Austin to, to whoever, they will tell you they make errors even up till now. Does God condemn them for that? No. Who condemns them? Yourself. When we condemn ourselves and say, look, I can't make again, I'm trying. Stop trying. Take my advice. Stop trying to live for God. Let God live for you. That revelation there. Stop trying to live for God. Let God live in you. And you have to be wise. You have to be careful about the times that we are living in. No man knows when the Lord will come. No man knows what hour. Somebody sent a video for me yesterday. Person in church. And the video they sent is where something in Israel, some Jesus appearing with some angels over Israel to protect them. And asking me the question, what you think about it? You know, they wanted to send it for pastor and the prophet sent it for me to explain. I view it and me reply. I do have time for that, you know. I do have time to go and explain. You see a cloud and we're in the cloud. And what God didn't give me that. God didn't, God didn't give me that yet. Because some people try to interpret dreams and vision and they messed up people's life. You know what I'm saying? I am not running down a word, you know. I'm not running down a preacher, you know. He could be who? He could come from Cal -Cal Calcutta. He could come from Zimbabwe. And he come in and, he's, and everybody getting excited. A prophet is coming in the land. and all, all, all. I see people get so excited for that. And their own word being preached in the church, they go excited. <laughs> the preacher preaching... The writing in church, you will train in you. You cock your ears, that enough. But when you hear a voice outside, you're running. And when you get messed up, you come back straight here. Don't ever damn the bridge you're crossing. You know? A lot of people damn the bridge you cross. And not so sister going, and that will walk over the same bridge, hooking on to it before the fall. And they break it there, but they still have to reach on the other side. You belong to the church that is perfect. And that church, the head of that church is Jesus Christ. Put your hand together. The head of that church is Bishop Jesus. I rather call him Bishop than a lot of people. Apostle Jesus. Teacher Jesus. Pastor Jesus, Master Jesus, Evangelist Jesus. Jesus had the fivefold ministry in him. That's why it is a perfect church. Because he had all that the Father has given to the Holy Spirit. Jesus had it all, not like us. Some of us have one or two of the gifts and calling that still we don't know we have it because we're sitting on it. 
Some of us have, have calling to do things. I look in here this morning, I've seen a lot of young people. Well, not even young, but middle age. I see an empty drum and an empty keyboard. We're waiting for the pastor to tell you something. Go to a little class, talk to Brother Bini. Say, give me a little few notes to help me out now. And I will help you out with the music. That is a way to call. You, you have to wake up your calling. Don't sit and say, whenever somebody come and think, because some is come and go as you see it happen. They come, hot, 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 and then they're gone. You have to continue. You have to encourage you and say, see me? Let me try a thing now, man. Let me pull a little string. Let me get a little advice. Let me get a class. And let me do something so that I can be able to benefit the worship. You don't think about that? That is the church. The church is made up not only of the fivefold calling, but there's another part called help. If you read the Bible, if you read it carefully, we miss out that part. Yeah? We preach on pastor, evangelist, apostle, prophet, teacher, but we forget the word continues to say also help. You know, it's help. Helps. Like these fellas, when they have to assist pastor, my brother in the back, brother John, they have to run up and down and get things done and thing. And, so, and, and some working hard and some snowing away. You cannot improve in church growth if you are not waking up and getting your calling in God. You cannot say, I'm not coming to church. I go stay online. That way I don't address too much people online, you know. You notice I, I just say good morning, but I don't really address too much. Those genuinely online who cannot make it, but there are people who online could make it. There's some. But for no reason, they want to come in the assembly. They prefer online. So while they're chunking the curry thing in the kitchen, the thing on now. But they're not really taking on that, you know. You know it's a lot of fake. Let me tell you, they put on this. Why so what's going on in the Bible study in Wednesday? And they have it on, but they sleep away, you know. When, if the pastor just say, Brother Joe, um, would you lead us in dismissing us in prayer? But your ball whole night on Joe Joe not waking up. Joe snoring. You understand? Or you're in the kitchen or you're washing your car and you forget our phone because you just want to put it on to know well, Pastor, online, you know. Boy, we know all them tricks, boy. I'm not seeing you, eh? But I just join a reference now. If I'm not on it, I off. I'll be honest with you. And most of the time, my wife will be on it and we will be there. So when you don't see my phone, she will be there. You understand what I'm saying? But <coughs> we, got to we got to mature our life and our growth in God. It's time we take the work of the Lord serious. There is a time coming when you will long to get serious, you know. My brother, there is a time coming when you will long to say, Pastor, let me keep church now. You'll knock on that door whole day and when you come with empty. The rapture taking place and gone. There is a time coming when there will be no more preachers, you know, preaching, no more worshiping, no more singing, you know. Jai with Jesus told the disciples, do what you have to do, what? Quickly. Walk while it is day for the night cometh when no man could walk. We're walking hard for Caesar, you know. Oh God, I don't want to say it, but I say it. We're working hard for Caesar, you know. We're turning day into night, shift into shift for Paisa. Not all of us. And then all of a sudden, boom, shot. A illness come and knock you down. My case is different. God have a way of dealing with me. But we're not seeking the kingdom of God first. What is seeking the kingdom of God for? Jesus said, we are, the Bible said we must seek the kingdom of God first. You've got to seek the interest of the work of the Lord. If we're going to have something, everybody should make an effort and put their hands and let me go together to the plow. 
In all churches, you only see in the handful, the famous few. I just call them the famous five. Most of them are six or seven, but now, you know, you're having something? Uh, come in, you know. Come in what? Come in what? You go on east and the thing on west. And then when, <coughs> when the church has nothing, we sit down, we complain. But the church has nothing, and we never keep in nothing. And the thing, boy, complainers are the first ones to, do, to talk that. The ones, let me tell you, you know who the ones is criticized first? Let me tell you from experience. The ones who do not give no money to the church, the ones who do not help nobody in the church, the ones who don't support nothing in the church having, let me say, first one is criticize and complain. I want to preach Bible to you. I know some of them, you know. I'm not saying it generally. They want to preach Bible and prophesy, you know. When they say they come in on Sunday morning, they, they want to take the mic from the pastor and prophesy, you know. Pastor, you cool it. It's a mind time and you want to prophesy and, and all kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Not when I change a service. Not when I preach and you're going to ask me and stop me and tell me, the Lord say, you better sit down there and wait. And after, tell me the Lord say, tell me what you want to say. Don't come and talk to the congregation. I had experience already. Preaching hands down. I do things differently. Eh? You know what kind of jinx a man get? You want to disturb the service and say, God said now is, you want to speak. I say, hold your horses right there, brother. Cool yourself. He sit down there. I think he leave the church. I think he come back. Cool yourself. There is a spirit of discord. There is a spirit causing confusion. If you read scripture carefully, you will understand the Bible said, do things in decency and in order. There's a place and time for you to say what you want to say. There's a place and time for you to say what you... God, Christ is the head of the church. He placed the fivefold ministry, pastor, teachers, prophet, evangelist. All for the edifying. Somebody say edifying. Somebody say edifying. That's another word for encouragement and support. For the work of the Lord. Why do you think the Bible spoke about now? Some people go on with this doctrine that there should be no woman preachers. You know where they get that from? The Bible. But hear how they turn it and twist it. Hear how they interpret it wrong. They interpret it wrong because in those days, you know what the women used to do? The women used to just rise up and want to talk, prack, 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 and ask questions and disturb the services. That way they say, Keep your mouth closed sometime. And now they bring a doctrine, a woman shouldn't preach, she should remain silent in the church. That was the reason why. It's not for a woman to come and preach. Yeah, well, that fella, Gino Jennings, all in him, right? I saw some of ladies watch him. They call he a, a church mashup man. He come with all kind of false doctrine and, and issues. I do a time to listen. I, I glance him. I say, he need help. All you are talking about is the past and the church and pulling down this past and this evangelist and this. I see this man real perfect. I see this man is Jesus. Because only Jesus said, judge not that he may not be judged, you know. They call it what? I just call it the steel beam from your eye. Not so? Is that somehow we have steel beam, you know? We have beam, you know? Not normal beam. Before you could judge somebody, make sure that you in order, you know? And do you know we are not really come ordered to judge people? You know why? The Bible self say, Jesus himself say, by their fruit you shall know them. So if a person like gossip and a person like confusion and what have you, that fruit go open up and you'll see. So you know to address that person. You don't have to, they're not judging them, you know. That's the culture, that is the character. But if a person has love and forgiveness and mercy and grace and like the fellowship and like to see things going, that is good fruit. It's hard 
to kick against the pricks. Who was spoken to that? Who was told that? Pastor, you take me too quick, man. You must give me a little chance. I want to hear it from them. To see if they know your Bible because you're teaching. So I want to know a testing. Saul. So, that's all right. Saul was going to destroy the church. He was going to make bacchanal in the church. Lock them up. Separate. It has some real souls among the church, you know. If you are careful, it has souls that come to destroy, you know. They come so nice and smooth. You have to be careful. Be wise. You have to get the spirit of this discernment. You have to get the spirit of this old man quite correct, not suspicious. Something happened with somebody and you, you, get, you don't jump to conclusion suspicious already. You know nothing where a body matter, but you run with that thing, you run your mouth like a river niles. And you run down the road and you back, 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 you are here, back, back, back. And when you do hear this, when you do hear this story, you know it's opposite. Why we don't take the gospel so? No, I'm not beating you, you know. I'm talking generally. Why we don't take the gospel so and run it down the road and say, Jesus saved, Jesus love you, he died for your sin. No. But oh gosh, when you hear a little thing about somebody, hmm, and you know sometimes God is allowed to come back in, to you yourself. Who's and that? We're talking about and run. It come back to you, you know. And when it come back to you, you're like a little lamb. You want nobody to your, your, your hurt, your pain. What you sow, you reap. God never called we to run with bad news. He called us to run with the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. He called us to go and to witness. How many of you witness? How many of you tell somebody about Jesus when the day come? I mean, you have to preach to them, you know, my brother. You have to have a microphone and shout down. God love you. I know you're going through a situation well, you know. Tell me, I'm going to help you. I'm going to try. And not only preaching or something, you have to take out your little money and help them to give them a little ride. The only thing is only preaching alone. Or sometimes a man needs food. And you, 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 you observe the man think tough. He lost his work or think tough. So you bank it up there for interest for the bank to take it. To lend other people money all them big shot. Them big shot living out of me and you, you know. When them take the big loan, who you think they're taking? Is you just squeezing their little 10,000 we have in the bank. But you went to take out a seat to sow for somebody. You put a blind eye. Them have to walk. Them know how I walk all the days of my life and how I toil. And, uh -huh. When you die, your family buying a $3,000 box for you. They say a $10,000 too much. All these squeezes, squeezing, and you keep that money. A $3,000 box. All it have is a thin piece of cloth like this on some old boxing board. Mm -hmm. When you leave your 10,000 to bury, to get a good box, they leave the, the barrier with that. Because you know why? You didn't sow no good seed. You, are, you are help somebody in the way, boy. It's good to help people. I preaching why I talking this morning what I practice for 33 years. So me have nothing to hide. And I'm not a boast, it's not a shame. Many have come to us. Many who didn't have food, house, nothing, struggling, and we're still doing it. The little that we have, sometimes the double digit zero zero, but we're still squeezing to help because we've seen God blessing. To God be the glory. It's time we stop selfishness and stop our behavior saying that we cannot help and we cannot do this. The church is to help, and I'm not talking about only among us. Eh? Maybe a neighbor, maybe a friend, maybe, maybe the same people who cost you. Maybe the same people who abuse you and bad talk you. Well, look my wife then, she go tell you. 99% of the people who come for help to us is the same people who gossip about us and backbite. And they press the button in the gate, I wanna watch. I didn't run inside and hide. I opened the gate. I said, come in, come in. How you going? And sit down. You know, I had a problem with this and thing. And I talk about all the fun things. And when we're done, we help them get through in everything. And to God be the glory.
Jesus said to love your enemies, bless them that curse you and despitefully use you. Me are saying what a man saying, or a man say, Jesus said it. Sometimes it hurts when you see them come to you and you know them is the one who tried to put spokes in your life and destroy you. But they come to you and you, you feel like saying, me have time with them now, let me just give them a little fast talk and let them go the way I'm busy. But you sit down and listen to their problem. And you pray with them. And you pull out a little note and you give them. Or you buy some groceries for them. The devil is telling you, boy, all that? But you take no that voice. Because you know why? The voice that I hear is, bless your enemies. Heap coals of fire upon the head. Resist the devil. It's not good enough just to walk with a nice Bible to church and sing a few songs and we put on with nice clothes and we come to church. Normally, every time if I go in anywhere and I see people coming to church, I stop and give them a ride. So I see my brother and sister here. Oh God, the post fine coming. It was right here. I saw my set a thing in the seat and then go in the back. I said, nah, the whole thing. But normally I will stop for you anyway. New car or anywhere I stop in. Also, we don't, we don't segregate, you know. When did she get a brand new car from brand new smelling new? We're transporting people to church, looking for them. Eh? Somebody used to have Sunday to shine on your car and polish on your car. Yeah. Or you see people coming your way. You're, after service, you jump in the vehicle and you're gone. You care about nobody going home, you know. Axel, we still doing it. When church over my road, a huge congregation. Pastor is not that way. He's trying to make effort, but we can't let the pastor do everything. We can't say, stop waiting on the pastor to do everything. Now. The cook, the bottle washer, and the what? How do you call it? Help me now. Preacher, the cook, the bottle, brother Jai, the cook, what do you call it? He doing everything. Well, whatever. Right? Right. Take up yourself and say, listen, pastor on a strange boy, the man preaching, he preparing, he doing this, he trying to make the place nice, he trying to help people. Let me take up a little mantle and do something now, man. Pastor, well, here we're going on now. I go pass and take up Jackie and Joan and Jim. Pastor, look, I know you're doing a little work in the church here. I'll come and get a little over on ourselves now. I know many of you do it. After service, don't just jump in your vehicle. Make sure that people go home. <clears throat> when service over, my arrow, a couple of times, some members live way up in the Guaya. Way up. And sometimes, most of the time, pastors want us to come home by him and relax and then after service. And when I see this scene, I say, how are you going? I say, they say, no, well, they wait on a taxi day because, you know, the vehicle go on already. Well, before pastor come outside, because I know when pastor come outside, he going to go and drop them. I take it in front. I say, hey, girl, you take a ride and go by pastor. Bam shot. That is where he's operating. I load them up, man, and we gone. Them don't have lunch and waiting for me eating. Them don't eat already, you know, by the time I come back. I the only man to eat. I love it. I enjoy it. You think I go see service over and people with, in the hot sun? We are going short, long. And you just jump in your nice air condition, can you go home? That Christianity, that's not Christianity at all. You need to get saved. You need to get Jesus' love. A hard day, boy. Hmm. All right, let me just share a little word here. That was the introduction. <coughs> 10 to 11. All right, Hebrews chapter 10. I hope everybody have a Bible. Eh? Buy one. Box of KFC. I don't know how much right now. Or a castle, I think, going up. I don't know. Get a Bible. Invest in a Bible. You're not too big to learn. We have Bible school going on in my room. Bible school, eh? For Bible school students. We already went through Bible school. Dr. Morris, hello, graduate, all kind of thing. What they're teaching there, we could teach them 10 times. Listen carefully, yeah? Listen what I'm saying. This is not a boast. We have a, a good group. We're teaching 
<clears throat> pastor is organizing for evangelist teacher the fivefold ministry and they are in the Bible school. We jump into the Bible school, man. And you know, many times pastor will say to the the the, the, uh, the other groups who now come up and say, we don't have to be in that, but we are here every Tuesday from seven, no, from six to nine, studying the word and in Bible school, me and her together with the other students. I could say I could be home that three hours, I could be sleeping, snowing. I do bunk to be in the Bible school, pastor told them that. But we humble ourselves to learn. I want to learn more. I want to know more. And, and I encourage them to invest in good Bibles. Invest in good Bible. King James Version, New King James Version. Who's a good Bible? Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verses 23. 10, 23. Going to, when you're ready to preach, you start to get it. I don't know what's going on. Not in my canoe. Also, Hebrews 10:23. <laughs> Let us hold fast <coughs> the profession of our faith without what? Wavering. For he is faithful that promise. Let me go step by step. He's telling us here. Let us hold fast the profession, the faith. So your faith is a profession, a job. Profession in another word is a job, what you're doing. Let us hold the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider, somebody say consider. Somebody say consider. One Another. Have you lately considered one another? What did God tell the devil about Job? Have you not considered my servant Job? God was, you know what he was doing there? He was boasting on Job. If you read it carefully. God knows Job will go through a serious test. And he knows the end of it. So he tell the devil... Have you not considered my servant Job? Is it nice for God to say to the devil, Have you not considered Brother Jai this morning? Brother Beanie? My brother in the back? My sister? Have you not considered them? And God removed the barrier around Job and let the devil take full charge. God allowed it, you know. Sometimes in your life, God allow things for you, not to destroy you. It wouldn't destroy you. But you know what he allow it for? To build your character in him. To build your life in him. That's why when things happen in your life, don't be quick to speak. The Bible says, don't be quick to speak. But what? Be slow to, yeah, be swift to hear. And slow to speak. Because sometimes God is dealing with you personally in your spiritual life. Things are happening negatively. You are living for God and serving him. And you say, why me? Why I have to go through this? Why I have to suffer? Why I have to face this? What is happening with me? God is dealing with you to bring you into a place where you will be totally committed and surrender to him. Have I not considered your servant Job? And let us consider one another to provoke. Somebody say provoke. Say it loud. Provoke. Say from today. Say it after me. From today. This morning, now those of you a little tired and sleepy, I could understand that you woke hard. So if you're feeling that way, you just stand up and shake yourself or something, you know. I know you always be. So say it for me. Just somewhere. Where are you going? 
Right. To provoke, say it, to provoke unto love and to good works. Don't provoke people to anger. Provoke them, what the Bible say, to love. That is when I come in church and I will make some little joke and say to somebody, you know, a little joke to make them laugh, nah? to provoke them. That's the kind of provocation you need. Don't come to somebody and tell them you're provoking them. That man is good, you know. I know the man for you to stay with you. You better leave him. That people in churches come to that kind of way. People going through a little problem in a marriage, the first thing you jump on the bandwagon, he is good, you know. She is good, you know. What you care for, you know. You're causing back and along confusion. You're provoking to anger. And when it's pure out in the open, it's not me. It's Auntie Kamala. Well, you know, everybody's blaming she now. I'm using that term, right? So don't vex me. It's not me. It's Cam. You have to call all your name now, so you know. At that time, you start the culture. Provoke each other. To love. Care for one another, na man. I'm talking about starting from the church. Care for one another in church. Love husband, love your wife. Wife, be submissive to your husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Don't be rebellious. Children, don't be rebellious and curse them. And show them hate. Children, provoke your parents to love. Hear what I tell them. Daddy, mommy, how long are you going on a honeymoon? I buy a ticket for you. you going No amen here. The mommy, I come to help you in the kitchen. Take a little five on the couch and let me do a little thing. I provoke into love. Because there's a saying, you don't miss the water till you well run dry. Not so? Eyes over provoke and eyes get both for it. Me are going there. I washed four loads of clothes yesterday. I said, cool yourself. Mushing and dryer, cool yourself. And I still get a little both for it. To walk from up so to down so to so that long distance I walk, you know, when I don't are tired, but I enjoy it. You understand what I'm saying? I enjoy because the Bible say provoke one another. One of the one of the brother, one of the pastor in my arrow came to preach on the Wednesday. When he came in, everybody was surprised because he never really grew mustache. He yeah, had this big, thick mushas come down here and a little thing. So, he has some size. After the service, I see I walk up to him in front of somebody, brethren, and I, he's take joke. Right? Be careful. Some people can't take joke. I say, hmm, look at Brother Hitler, how we looking. Well, boy, that man roll. The only thing he doing fall on the ground and roll with laugh. He belly hot. He go on me tell his wife, everybody, and them start to laugh, everybody. You know, he reminded me now to call him Brother Hitler, technically, with a mustache, if it's how he look. And I provoke him, and he's happy. I know who to give jokes. Eh? Some people can't give jokes, you know. You have to be careful. But I just join it now. You provoke people, and next time when he bald head, I say, boy, well, all I need is some kiwi for your head now. And he laugh, he got so the wife. But I enjoy it, you know. I enjoy to try to provoke people to love. Christianity is not a stiff jacket thing where you only preach sin, 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 sin. You go to hell, you go to hell if you don't. No, no. I'm talking about love each other among you. It starts here. Because let me tell you something. All eyes are on you and I. You know that? You will be shocked to know you in Prindestong here, and people in my area know what kind of Christian you is, you know. People eyes on you when you take up the cross, you know. 
When you take up that cross and begin to follow Jesus, everybody eyes on you, you know. You could go where and try to hide. They look and they will talk. But let it talk at least. No, listen. Not everybody will say good about you. You could do what you want. You could give them house, land, money, and marry them too. And a bank account will still say, he, she, they will have something bad to say. But the experience are talking about. Better study that. Because Jesus said to love one another. And especially, here we say, especially the household in the book of Acts. The book of Acts. If you don't deposit something, you have a bank account. If you don't deposit a little money to save any bank, when you go with your bank card and you push it, say it at $10. And you push it and you press 100.00. 0, 0. 0, 0. How much you'll get? You might even get a ten dollars. Not enough funds. Good word. It void. If you don't give love, you expect people to love you. If you don't give out things when you in struggling time, and you'd say, Well, the pastor said we're going to give this a hand and this, let us come together and who will give $10 towards the hand panting? And you sit down there. Mm -hmm. like, you know, I work hard. Oh, you did, but, but, and you and didn't give nothing. When the time come, and your time come, and it's time for you, and people do the same thing, do grumble. Do grumble. And say the church will have no love, them are giving. All over a seat. It starts with you and I. Take care of the body of Christ. You know what the book says <laughs> in the book of Acts? We have it different today in churches. Eh? It's so sad. Many preachers have gone into money and business and robbing people. Many, many full gospel, quarter gospel, half gospel, many. They are straight from the book. You know what the book of Acts says? They brought all they had together. Are you following the Bible? I'm here following preachers. Eh? They brought all that they had together and everyone who had a need among the brethren, they distributed it equally. Let me say that again. In the book of Acts, the Bible says they brought all together. What I mean, in what time it means that if pastors say, well, you know, sister so, brother so, and that family has a need. And could we just take up an offering this morning towards that family? Some, some will give and some will give. But in the book of Acts, the Bible said they came together and they distributed, every man brought and they distributed to everyone that had a need. They started from the house of God first. This is not just for the pastor and the fivefold ministry to do. This is for you. It is amazing. You know, it's amazing. People in ministry that I know. Amazing. God will speak to them about speaking in tongues, prophecy, all kind of thing, big high tech thing. God spoke to me and said to you and this and that. But God is speaking to you to give nobody a little $20 when I need. He is speaking to you to go and make a little hamper home. And say, let me drop it for sister so and brother so. No, no, no. He is speaking to you and say, oh gosh, sister so I to go to the doctor. How is she going? Oh brother so, how are they going? I wonder, look at her travel. Sister, so how you go? Well, I'm traveling. I don't know. Quickly, you are your vehicle. Go and pick you up and say, I will carry you and carry to the hospital and wait for you and come back with some kind of arrangement. I do that recently too. But God could speak to you to speak to the pastor and the prophet. Say, God said the Lord. God said to you. God said to you. Christ is the head. 
He ordained the fivefold ministry for the perfection of the saints. Any other thing have to come out outside have to be according to the word. We taught, Pastor was taught, teaching right now presently in Bible school. It's amazing. But I know about it, but he's teaching on principles of ministry. One of the things he's teaching about is that some people have calling in the church who has a calling and they don't know how to bring it out. So here what the confusion start. They go and they meet a brother or a sister after service and say, God is speaking to me. And God is saying this. And you know sometimes the things where they say is against the pastor. They do my pastor in my arrow. God speaking to you. You want to tell the other brother or sister, pastor this and pastor that God show me that. Shut your mouth before you fall down dead. The book of Acts, two persons, a husband and wife. Now listen carefully with them. Eh? Nothing wrong if they sell the land for 100000 and they bring 10000 you know? Nothing wrong in that, you know? Or bring, or bring $5. Nothing wrong, you know? You know what was wrong? The line in the teeth. That's the problem. They could have come and say, or didn't say anything and just put Five dollars out of the hundred thousand. I just drawing a reference, and they would have been blessed still. But when they lie, not to the man of God. They lie to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a. No Holy Ghost, you know. We have that belief. If you are shake, if you are bake, or if you are awake, thy Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit is a person. Yes. Yes. He's not a thing. He's not a feeling, a goosebump. He is a person. And he feels grieve, hurt, just like any of us. The Holy Ghost is not even this. I see the blessing this now. The blessing this. You hear me? And then you go and drink, and the Holy Ghost will revive you. The Holy Ghost is not. Wait one. I see it somewhere. Oh, the Holy Ghost is not this. You're going to pray for people, and if somebody do have the oil, is a problem. A confusion start. You didn't put no oil on the people, and you're praying for them. I think the waste, no? The Holy Ghost was sent when Jesus left. When Jesus was on the earth, we didn't have to run to the Father and to the Holy Spirit, you know. Read the scripture carefully. Everything was pointed to Jesus. When he left, you know what he said? The Father, no man come unto the Father except by him. He said, I am going now and I will send the Holy Ghost and he shall what? Lead you and guide you into all truth. If you're prophesying and you're preaching and you're singing and your music is not aligned to the word of God. It is not from God. A lot of people I come in contact with. Because they're in the front line in ministry. And after the service. Pastor. 
you could interpret this dream for me. And I'll say, okay, let me listen. I know interpret, I know dream, you know. I tell you, flat me, a play, nothing, why is not? But I just give them a little entertainment. And when they start, it may slip away halfway because it's one thing. They start from the great, 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 great grandfather and mother and how this happened and how that happened. <sighs> when they're done, I say, listen, let me pray. And I start to pray and cast out all those historical spirit that are troubling you. Let me tell you about your dream. I, I, God never give me up to now no vision and nothing about dreams, you know. I'm very careful. I'm very careful because that could destroy people's life. Somebody come at you with a dream and say they want to interpret it. If God didn't call you and tell you how to interpret it, keep your mouth closed, tell you people flat. You don't know it. You're going to mess up people's life. Because some people's dream is to mash up people's marriage and home and family, you know. Let me come to the end here. An important part. I'm going to skip. This morning, while waiting for my wife, this word came to me before. But I was just scrolling trying to see Pastor Dukan on Facebook. Table and Open Bible. I'm a good friend. And he was preaching in exactly one of the main words where I wanted to preach. And he was preaching this morning about the forsaking and assembling uh, uh, the gathering of the saints. And he was teaching on the line exactly certain things where I was going to say. I sit down and I say, Lord have mercy. This is confirmation. Exactly with that script here that I had to preach this morning, he was sharing on it. If you, if you have time and you go back and you look at more Bible, look, look what he said. He was telling the people and he was saying also that if he asks a question, where are the people in church this morning? You will get some strange answers. <coughs> Hallelujah. Not, here what it say in the next verse. I'm going to finish here. Not, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling. <coughs> what is the assembling? The gathering of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting or encouraging or lifting up one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. And many more to say, but time run out. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Now when they charge people in the law, many people are charged for assembling to gather, to gamble, sell drugs and what have you. But this assembling we're talking about here is getting together whenever we could. Because not all the time I could understand there are certain circumstances arise. People may not be on a Sunday or whatever prayer meeting, but I could understand that. We are no hard and fast. But totally what it means is that when we could make it and we blatantly decide we're not going. Let them do the thing. You know, Christians is talking about, you know, some of the problems in church today that you have rebellious children. You want to know how many children are rebellious in church and for the reason why? Because after church, when they go home, they forget they cook duck and chicken and callaloo. They have pastor, evangelist, prophet, and teacher for the lunch. But you missed that one. You understand what I'm saying, right? You're going to eat the chicken and eat the kalalu and crab. But you have time with that. You can't wait to come before the table and say, eh? where you have to preach that for? Who is he? Eh? Eh? I don't know what's wrong with them, you know. Them will want me to leave and go to another church, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that church is waiting for you. You know what they're waiting for you to do? To pipe out your money. Because you know why? We got to allow anything to happen in the churches, some churches. Anything you could do. Live in adultery, can um common law, any kind of thing. We wouldn't talk to you about them thing. You're, you, all kind of thing. Take your drink and come and when you think you're speaking in tongues, you're high like a kite under alcohol. 
Hey, 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 yo, po. I see them, you know. See a man come and he's speaking in tongues in a crusade. And he breath high like kite. He nearly drunk me before I pray for him. But he's speaking in tongues. We sit down and we discuss the pastor, the teacher, evangelist, the prophet. And then you expect the children now. Pastor, pray for my child. I don't know when they come in church, you know. Pray. Pray. I say, uh huh? Pray for them. So all you living right. Isaac said, I say, you all living right. All you love Jesus. All you serving God. Why don't you run hate you so? Why they hate you so? The cancer. You know when it's down to the end, they admit we had problems. We used to really discuss people in the church. Not only the pastor. We just discuss people in the church. And that would cause them to run away from church. They want church. Because they say, if thy church and mommy and daddy could go on so and do think they want to part with that, nah? Search yourself this morning, eh? If you're here, search. God will bring a word by guess, eh? Hear what I'm saying? God do not allow his word to go in vain.